Hello, my name is Santiago Morales, leading director and main character of the film Betrayal of a Brotherhood. This film shows how people can turn their back on each other at any given time, and that you can never truly know somebody's intention. In the first two minutes of the movie, there are two key scenes that help develop the narrative of the story. One being a peek into the near future, where the main character can be seen training normally. In this scene, the main topic of the film is introduced when the main character's teammate asks him about his supposed injury. Then, in the second scene, the main conflict of the movie is presented. A dichotomy of intentions is shown. Both characters are doing something to get rid of each other, but they don't know the other is trying to do the same thing. Today, I'll be discussing the entire of the film, as well as expanding on the decision making of the film. A question that is commonly asked to producers right after the product is done is, how does the product stay or challenges the conventions? I think my film somewhat stays within the conventions of a conventional sports film. One of the things that stays within conventions would be the setting of the film. The film is set in two different fields. The first place where the movie takes place is Patch Reef, and also it takes place in Terramar Park. For this movie, I decided to stay within the conventions of the iconography of a sports film. Kids that represent their sport, utensils used to play a sport, and etc. The narrative of this film is very common. It's a man versus man-esque film. However, in this movie, I try to depict how people aren't always what they seem to be on the surface and that their true intentions could be malicious. I try to show this by the usage of voiceovers and dialogues that hint at the two characters wanting to harm each other in different ways, but for the same purpose, which is kicking each other out of the team. This is shown when the protagonist says, I'll have to act like I'm injured now in Spanish. And it is also shown in this scene when the antagonist says, he's done. Also, for the representation part, I try to represent both the main characters of the story as fake friends. This was shown by the use of a shot where the antagonist directly tries to injure the protagonist, and it's also subtly hinted at by the use of a close-up shot towards the end of the introduction, showing the protagonist's smirk, hinting at him possibly faking the injury. My product tried to appeal to a wide audience of soccer players, to people who have to deal with fake friends in their lives and in a broader sense. Teenagers that feel the need to be someone else in front of everybody else to hide their true intentions or their true self. In order to appeal to such a wide audience, I try to use soccer jargon and music associated with the happiness and joy soccer brings to footballers, such as the use of the Brazilian song, My Esquinada. This song depicts the pure nuance of soccer. However, in order to show the more psychological and somewhat harmful effects of soccer and friendships, I had to turn this is very nuanced by showing the bad intentions of both characters. This was deliberately done to appeal to those who mentally struggle with sports and fake friendships. In regards to how my film will be distributed as a real piece of media or a real film, my group and I partook in a long discussion about what real media company will work alongside with us with the production and distribution of the film. On one hand, my teammates thought Warner Bros. would be the most fit to collaborate with us. But on the other hand, I thought, personally me, I thought that Paramount Pictures would be the most adept to work with us. This being due to the direction of the 2005 sports film, Coach Carter. In regards to my personal growth as an editor, I experienced little growth because I used to edit videos in the past. However, I learned to put my editing skills into practice in order to convey the main themes of the film. For example, I decided to silence the audio in the clip right before the tackle because the absence of a backing track forces the viewer to pay close attention to what is happening on the screen. I was also the one to handle all the scheduling process of the film. Matter of fact, due to our busy soccer schedule, it was hard to find days where we were all free to film. The driver gonna drop you off. For this film, the technology we used was really basic. For example, I used an iPhone 12 to record, Kawa used the iPhone 13, if I'm not wrong, to record, and then Santi also used the iPhone, plus, I think it was an iPhone mini to record. So yeah, it was pretty basic, the recording tactics, but then for the editing part of it, we used CapCut, which has a long cabinet of things we can use to convey meanings, depict and portray themes, etc. 
So looking back into the whole film and looking into perspective, I think we did a pretty good job at conveying what we wanted to convey, uh, portraying the teams correctly, and I think it was a good movie. Thank you guys for watching, and I hope you enjoy the movie.